Part one is going to be just talking about primarily the, the TSGL amount function and kind of taking that apart and understanding what its, what its arguments are and how to use them. Uh, I'm going to start with a quick tour where we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the individual arguments, but we're just going to get a flavor for you know, starting, starting to build a report and then dropping in this function and seeing it return a result. Then we'll take a step back through it, looking at, at it in more detail, and talk about what all we can do with that in terms of uh, what all the different arguments support. Okay, so I want to use this slide as my cue to uh, jump out of the PowerPoint and uh, jump into Excel. Okay, so I'll start with something fairly simple here. Uh, I'm going to say that we want a, a spot for a fiscal year. Period and, and I'm going to then also put in a, just a, a spot here for a few base accounts. And I'll, I'll come back to this as we get further into this as well. Um, I'm going to use, in this case, uh, just ordinary Office Connector Query to provide me with the titles for those accounts so I don't have to type them. But the, the main point here is that uh, with just Office Connector Financials, you have the tools to bring in the values. Everything else could simply be static. So your account lists, account numbers, account titles even, that could all just be static data in your worksheet. Uh, I will be showing an example in a moment of, of providing a list of base accounts using a query. And that's not really required. It's just convenient in this case because I don't want to type them all. Okay, so I'm going to look up the title for my base account using this volume cell A5. I know I'm not spending a whole lot of time talking about this. This is kind of content that we would ordinarily cover as part of just uh, regular beginner training for Office Connector Query. So there's my list of accounts. And let's say I, I want this year 2013, May, and I want... Um, Company 10. So the way to drop in a financial value is, again, I go up here to the Office Connector Toolbar. I click on that uh, Function Selector button, and I locate my TSGL amount function right here. And again, there's uh, lots of documentation on in the content area that explains what all the different arguments uh, mean, and we're going to be stepping through those in detail here in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on Insert. And now what I'm seeing is the standard Excel uh, function arguments window where I can plug in values for those different arguments. So for the prefixes argument, I'm going to select that. Now notice um, I hit, I kind of did that sleight of hand there. Uh, when I clicked on it, it put in B3. Um, if I were to finish this formula here in cell C5 and copy it down, well, I know, you know, that's a relative cell reference. So if, not, if you don't use Excel a lot, just keep it in mind, B3 then becomes B4, and then B5. So I always want it to be B3, though. That's, that should be a fixed location. F4 on your keyboard cycles you through the different um, absolute cell reference options. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just making that absolute, so it's always B3. Uh, base account. Going to be a five, leaving the row uh, relative. This will year be one, and period would be two. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just click OK at this point, and we can see that it already pulls in a value. And if I just copy that down, uh, then it pulls in the value for those individual accounts then as well. And if I change um, the period, uh, I get the 
the value to whatever there is. You know, if I change the prefix to blank, I get consolidation of all prefixes. Okay. So that's, that's basically how that works. Uh, so again, you know, the, the function, TSTL amount, just works like any other Excel function in that if I change one of the other cells that it depends on, that causes that to recalculate and I get the, the appropriate values. Thank mm -hmm. you.